Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Kate Sweeney and I have been studying uncertainty for over 20 years. I've studied lots of different kinds of stressful uncertainty that we experience in my time since I got my PhD at the University of Florida in social psychology and now as a professor of psychology at the University of California, Riverside. One of the things that I think about a lot in my research is how in the world we can cope with stressful periods of uncertainty, including the period of uncertainty that we all share now with the COVID-19 pandemic. The thing that our lab has found that is the most effective way of coping with these periods of uncertainty is a flow state. We're going to talk a lot about flow here, so let's just dive in. Flow is actually pretty simple. It's just getting completely absorbed in some kind of enjoyable activity. You're basically in the zone when you're in flow. The concept was first essentially discovered or described by a guy named Mike Csikszentmihalyi, who has been studying this now for many, many decades. And he was observing people who are creative types, so artists, singers, and that kind of thing. And he noticed that people who were in those fields could just sit for hours completely absorbed in an activity, ignoring hunger, discomfort, fatigue. And he said there must be something going on in that activity that's kind of transporting them out of that experience. And that is a state of flow. So there are three components that you really need to get into a state of flow. The activity you're doing needs to be enjoyable, of course, and you also need to have some way of marking your progress. You have goals, you can see how you're meeting them. But one really important component is that the skill that you have matches the challenge of the activity. If you're really good at something, the activity needs to be pretty challenging. And as you get better, the activity needs to get harder. If something's really easy, no matter whether you're good at it or not, it's just not gonna be that enjoyable. You'll be sort of bored or apathetic you're just not going to get in that zone that flow requires. If something's really hard and you're not good at it, you'll be anxious or frustrated. So you really need to find an activity that's challenging but not so challenging that you just want to give up so that it keeps your attention but doesn't frustrate you. So another key component to flow, to getting into flow, is to be able to mark your progress somehow. You need to have clear goals and you need fairly immediate feedback as to whether you're meeting them. Now this can happen in a very formal way, so if you're playing a video game and you're leveling up or you're doing some kind of educational game and you're progressing through the modules, that marks your progress in a really obvious way. But even with less formal activities like that, you can still find ways to mark your progress and know that you're meeting your goals. If you're doing yoga, maybe you can hold that pose a little longer. If you're gardening, you see that the flowers are blooming a little bigger than they did last year. If you're baking bread, that new loaf looks a little better, tastes a little better than the last one. And in all of these ways, you can kind of find that flow by knowing that you're getting better and you can increase that challenge as your skill improves. Flow feels like being in the zone. You are completely one with the activity you're doing. Now that has a couple of effects. For example, you lose track of time. Time seems to speed by when you're in a state of flow. In fact, I think of flow as that feeling you can't get into if you have to leave the house in 10 minutes because you will just completely lose track of time. You also lose your sense of self. You're just really not aware of your thoughts and feelings in the same way that you are normally when you're in that state of complete absorption in a state of flow. In fact, a little bit of research shows that maybe the front part of our brain that kind of does all the hard thinky stuff, the self-control, the self-awareness, it quiets down in a state of flow, which suggests that we really are kind of on autopilot in a really pleasurable way when we're in a flow state. Flow is essentially a kind of optimal experience in the words of the father of flow, Mike Csikszentmihalyi. In other words, it's living our best life. We are most productive, we are highest in happiness, we feel the most meaning in our activities when we get into that state of flow, being in the zone with an activity. In fact, there is tons of evidence showing that people who experience more flow in their day-to-day -day activities, or even in really stressful periods of life, that they're happier and that they have more positive emotions to kind of carry them through the day.
Almost any activity can become a flow activity if you just pay a little attention to the components that create flow. But the good news is there are lots of custom-built activities that are really made to get people into that flow state. Video games are probably the best example. They're enjoyable, they get harder as you get better, so that challenge skill balance is really created for you as the player. And then they give you lots of feedback as you meet your small goals in the game. If you level up, you get celebratory trumpet sounds. If you fail, you die in the game. You get a womp womp sound to let you know that you haven't done what you were trying to do. And so these games are really custom made to create that combination of features that gets you into a flow state. And you don't have to necessarily just play mindless video games. You can also play educational games like a language learning app or a math app. Those will also have those same components that get you into flow. Even the most boring activity can be turned into a flow activity with a little bit of attention. Now, I should be clear, not every activity can be restructured to feel like a flow activity. Some things are just too unpleasant. But if you've got something tedious and you're just having a little trouble getting it done, you can think about ways to A, make it more enjoyable if you can, but B, challenge yourself a little bit. So make sure that the activity is not boring, but actually challenging. And then set some goals and find ways to mark your progress. In that way, you can turn really any activity activity into a flow activity. Just like you can turn your own activities into flow activities, you can also do the same for your kids or your students. And of course, in these times of COVID-19, your kids might be your students as you're working through homeschooling or virtual learning. So what you can do is take daily activities that your kid has to do anyway, and think about the components of flow so that you can turn those daily activities into flow activities. That means knowing your kid's level of skill and making sure the challenge of the activity meets and slightly pushes that level of skill. It also means finding ways to have your kid or your student set clear goals and then giving immediate feedback on how they're doing at reaching those goals. So for example, if they reach a goal, you might give them a sticker or some points so that they feel like as they progress through their goals, they're moving towards some kind of reward and that keeps them in that flow state. One of the best things about flow is it can really help you to do better in school or at your job. Flow is fundamentally about achievement, and even better, it's about being productive and achieving without really putting in any effort at all. It just comes naturally when you're in the zone. Workplaces are constantly looking for ways to get their employees into flow states because then they have happier, more satisfied employees, they're more productive, and they kind of come to love their job. So if you can find ways to turn your job or your schooling into a flow activity, you're more likely to be successful and you're more likely to enjoy it while you're getting there. Flow and mindfulness are very similar in some ways, but they're also importantly different. Mindfulness is really about a state of being in the present moment, not trying to achieve, but just be, observe, non-judgmentally experience what's happening in the moment. Flow, of course, is also about being very much in the present moment. That's where they're similar. But with flow, you're in the moment in an activity. You're absorbed in something else. You've lost self-awareness. Time is passing quickly without your notice. That's really different from mindfulness, which is all about paying attention to your experiences in the current moment. Both flow and mindfulness can be really helpful during periods of stressful uncertainty, including this period of uncertainty that we're all facing with COVID-19. In fact, we have data for this now. Back in February, we collected data in China when the pandemic was really at its peak there. And we asked people how mindful had they been feeling recently and how much flow had they been experiencing? And then how were they feeling emotionally, psychologically, and health-wise? And what we found is that people who were feeling more mindful and who were feeling more in flow in the previous week were better off, as we would expect. Both flow and mindfulness are generally very helpful. But the exciting thing that we found in that study is that people who were in quarantine really seemed to experience a benefit if they were in flow in the previous week. Even though they were in quarantine, they were just as well off as people who were not in quarantine during that same period of time if they were getting into a lot of flow. So what it seems like from our study is that flow might be a key to making periods of self-isolation and uncertainty like we're all in a bit more tolerable. If 
if you want to find ways to integrate the benefits of flow into your daily life, I think it helps to ask yourself a few questions. What are some activities that you're doing already that you need to be doing that you might be able to turn into a flow activity? And then once you've thought of those activities, you have to think about how to make them challenging at the right level and to increase that challenge as your skill increases and find ways to mark your progress. So let's take, for example, someone who might be a casual jogger, just goes out for a run on the weekends. That might be a flow activity if you pay a little attention to those components. So each time you go out for that run, make sure you're pushing the challenge a little bit more each time as you get better. And then make sure you're marking your progress. Did you run faster this time than you did the last time? Did you run farther this time? If you can keep track of that in like a running journal, that might make this activity more than just a relaxing form of exercise and now a real flow activity. I hope that you found this information about flow helpful and you can integrate it into your daily activities to live a happier, more meaningful life. One of the best ways to get into flow is to learn something new. And at Creative Brain Learning's website, cblonline.org, they have many classes in exciting topics including robotics, art, music, game design, coding, and so much more. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.